Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Andrew Snorton with Creative Community Solutions. And as you're aware, whenever we do our press and media work, we have the opportunity to connect with some great people doing some great things across arts and entertainment, sports, government and politics, things along those lines. And as a reminder, the best ways to stay connected is on the internet. Visit the website of asnortonccs.com. Click on the menu for articles and coverage, and you'll see this as well as other great stories of great people doing great things. On social media, add Creative Community Solutions LLC on Facebook as well as YouTube, and make sure to add A Snorton CCS on Instagram and Twitter. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with just some extraordinary people tonight. They represent the five boroughs, which for people who don't know New York, they represent well. They are pioneers in arts and entertainment, especially being one of the bands who really put together hip hop and R&B as, as in the words of Stuart Scott, as smooth as the other side of the pillow. So I'm so excited to have members of the esteemed group, the Force MDs joining us. Fellas, how are you doing this evening? Hey, hey, hey. how you doing, man? All right, man, no, no, everything's uh, good. Everything is good, everything is good, man. Happy to hey, be here. Hey, happy to have you on. And so we have the members Khalil, Stevie D, and Zayim joining us. So I'm going to go ahead and start with Khalil. Khalil, if you could get us up and running, let people know where you are originally based out of and who would you say growing up were some of your early music influences? Well, I was born on Staten Island. That's one of the five boroughs. We call it the Forgotten Borough. And some of my influences was growing up was uh, the Jackson Five, Sam Cooke, Elvis Presley, uh, The Temptations, uh, Marvin Gaye, and Curtis Mayfield. Uh, you know, so many soul groups of those eras. A lot of Motown artists. We grew up uh, listening to them, you know, in our household. Our parents will have the big, you know, uh, 45 inches, 33 inches, you know, 33s. And uh, that's what we grew up listening to. That was like the soundtrack of our life growing up, you know? And I tell you what, that classic R&B is definitely, that's something that I grew up listening to. Stevie D, I'm going to throw the same question at you because sometimes your tastes are the same and sometimes it might be way on the other end of the year. <laughs> so what, well, it, <laughs> where are you out of? And again, some of your early music influences. Well, I'm also from Staten Island. Uh, Khalil's my brother. So we, we, we're brothers, so we grew up in the same household. We did listen to a lot of the same music, but, you know, it, you know some of his is a little different than mine, but most he, he has most of the same. Jackson 5 is clearly number one that uh, really influenced us because everybody wanted – we argued who's going to be Michael, Marlon, Jermaine. We, we, we you know, as brothers, we always – we were so uh, – they really uh, was a big influence. Uh, definitely, like he said, Temptations – uh, the Manhattans, these are guys we just listened to, the Manhattans. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely, again, like he said, Elvis Presley, because we called ourselves the Chocolate Elvis. You know, we just, mm -hmm. Elvis, he had so much soul like a black person at that time. He, you know, he made a lot of African-Americans really like uh, Earth, Wind & Fire. It's another group right. that we listen to a whole lot. Yes, we listen to a whole lot, Earth, Wind & Fire. And... Uh, who else? Uh, Dolly Part? No, not Dolly Part. Uh, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking with you on that. <laughs> nah, but you know that's just some of the groups that, <laughs> that really influence us. <laughs> wow. Well, hey, yeah, but, yeah. But you know, good music is good music, and that yeah, it is. And that takes me to Zayim again. Let us know where you're originally based out of, and some of your early music influence. Well, I was also born in Staten Island. And um, I was raised in Brooklyn. So um, I have those two barrels on my back. And um, the music I grew up on, you know, definitely classic music. The uh, Motown, um, Michael Jackson, Sizely Brothers, Glenn Jones. Oh, yeah, that's right, the Isley Brothers. You know, uh, man, Marvin Gaye, like they said. You know, of course, I used to, I used to definitely watch a lot of the Four Sms you know, because that's what I was around too. So a lot of that kind of definitely uh, grew up with me. You know, some of the classic, also the, the people from the 90s and early 2000s, the Ushers, the, the Drew Hills, the, 
you know, the, the Faith Evans and the, the stuff like that. Those people, real songwriters and real vocalists, I grew up with listening to that. So now let me ask you a question. All of you have shared the R&B influence and definitely, you know, for Khalil and Stevie D, where does hip hop come into all this? Because I'm hearing Jackson 5, Marvin Gaye, and I'm thinking your up-tempo, your ballads. How did you decide to infuse hip hop, which is at that time was like way on the other end of the universe, but how did you decide to, hey, we can blend these two art forms and come up with something different? Steve, Steve, you can answer that. Oh, oh, oh well, uh, uh, a friend of mine who was in the group also, that's a piece in Mercury, Mercury Charles Nelson, uh, he, he came from the Bronx after Staten Island. He was trying to tell me, hey, man, this thing called hip hop is the big thing coming now, man, you know. It didn't really hit Staten Island yet. And he just really told me about, told me about Africa Bambata, uh, Melly Mel, The Furious Five. And I was like, really? And, uh, and I started listening to it and just got hooked automatically. Even though I was in a singing group, my brothers, it was called the LDs, uh, singing on the Staten Island Ferry doing what we did. But he infused me into the hip hop sound. And I got, we made it, I, I was in two different groups. I was in the LDs with my brothers and them. And then I was in a group we called the Force MCs. Dr. Rock is our DJ at the Force MCs. And we became very popular rapping out in the Staten Island area. And then we finally went to Harlem in the Bronx. And everybody laughed at first because we was the forgotten borough of Staten Island. They didn't think that Staten Island could rap. But we learned from what we heard on the tapes. And we got the hang of it. And we came out there with our own style. And... All of a sudden, we was like really a hot group in hip hop, and we just learned from all the greats like Curtis Blow, The Treacherous Three, Fearless Four. You know, great lyricists. They really infused our us into hip hop. We just fell in love with hip hop, and we knew that we can sing also. So it just we just drew both both arts of music, hip hop and R and B, and merged of that, we merged them pretty much. And and one of the things that comes to mind. I know I'm kind of, you know, once again, just putting all this together, but I really think about the song Itching for a Scratch, where, <laughs> yeah. like, nope, I'm sitting here, y'all are breaking out the Argyle sweaters, and, <laughs> and it's like you're doing everything under the sun, and that was just so mesmerizing. Like, talk a little bit about, like, you just talked about, you developed your own style, and to a degree, you talked about you had the old soul element with R and B, and now all of a sudden it's the old soul element times two in regards to hip hop. So when you think about those tracks that were up tempo, where you are showcasing, you know, the medleys, excuse me, the melodies. But now all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, there's a little bit of edge to this crew. Like, like how, 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 <laughs> how did that just happen? Because it just seemed like it was just so flawless. How long well, you want to take that? Okay, yeah, no, well, well, well you, like, like my brother Steve said, during that time, you know, just immersing into the R and B, the, the hip hop and R and B. So this, this would make the bridge take place when you know when you hear "Itching for a Scratch" because uh, "Let Me Love You" came out first, and, and right then it's like when you hear "Let Me Love You," you hear the like the doo wop harmonies, and then you hear the, the hip hop beat, and you hear the rapping where my brother Steve is rapping. You know what you call, but then when you hear itching for a scratch, now he's just rapping. Now he's singing. We bringing both more of the singing to the rapping as well, I mean, and, and just just bringing more of it out together. But Steve can explain it better. Yeah, and and you know that itching for a scratch. Uh, see, <clears throat> people don't know that uh, MDs, the, the the last name MD stands for musical diversity. Now. Itching for a Scratch was the best described record for our musical diversity because they heard us imitate other artists, James Brown, Michael Jackson, uh, Mr. T, you know, just doing artists, just showing our versatility and uh, imitating other artists. They should heard us rapping and uh, they heard us harmonizing, uh, you know, melodies and they heard the scratching all along, all balled up in one record. And that, that, that drug, that had people like, hold up. Wow, I, 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 they never really heard that before. So we just tried to, it, first making that song, I got to say that uh, we was joking around. So let's make a song called Itchy for a Scratch. That'll be crazy. Have the DJ scratching. 
and everybody's laughing like a joke, but Tom Silver at a time where records like, no, that's a good idea, man. Do it. I'm telling you, do it. And we just made it out of the blue, just made it on the spot, and it became one of our biggest, biggest records, uh, Itching for a Scratch. And 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 I'm and I'm glad you just explained. Sometimes it's like the most brilliant ideas come from something so simple, like you said, <laughs> around, like you know, goop playing around. Excuse me, you're having a creative moment because you are artists and you are creatives. So you're having a creative moment, and and being silly, you came up with something like you said nobody was doing it. And when when people saw that, and it's like y'all can do like any and everything under the sun <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> do that stuff but again then i pivot back to your r&b roots and and there's obviously i mean of the many tracks there's two ballads that come to mind uh tender love and then the mid-tempo track love, tender is, love, a love, love is a house uh clearly two of our biggest songs but you, you, you left one out tears was our first top 10 record Mm -hmm. that's now tears is the song when every when they heard us do let me love you give me girl uh tears when they first heard us do tears that's when this uh, the, uh everybody like looked at us like wow these guys can really sing for real like real like temptation Smokey robinson that's changed that that that's that was the part of our uh musical diversity they, they heard us sing like wow these guys can sing that was the first record that went top 10. Itching for a Scratch came after, uh, ten, I mean, uh, Tears, but people hearing us singing Tears didn't sing, heard us singing Itching for a Scratch. He was like, hold up, is that the same group that just did Tears? That was part of the musical diversity that we put in, in, our, you know, in our style. But Tender Love and Love is a House is clearly two of our biggest hits, you know, but we had like songs before that, but they were the ones that's noticeable to the, the whole younger generation, even now coming up. Those are songs that stick out the most. And uh, Tender Love was a song, uh, of course, on the Crush Groove soundtrack, which is a movie, Crush Groove soundtrack. And a lot of people don't know that that song was supposed to go to New Edition at first, but they had a problem getting it. It, it was a, a, a contractual problem that they couldn't do it. And they gave it, they handed it to us, you know, uh, Monica Lynch of Tommy Boy Records said, you have to give this song to Force and Thieves, they can do it, I'm telling you. And then the guy was like going back and forth, said, all right, give him, a, give him a try. And we end up uh, going in the studio for two and a half hours. And the simplest song, we just did, you know, uh, Jam and Lewis definitely predicted that was because this is going to be a huge song, they told us. And it became one of our, well, our biggest hit and it became Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam's first ever crossover song that they made out of all the songs they made. 10 Love was their first crossover top 10 hit. It came from us, four CDs, people who didn't know. Fun fact, if you didn't know. And uh, it was great doing that because uh, it, it just, just changed so many people's lives. Like we get so many people that tell us how much that means to them. And you know, it ain't love is a house which people think that Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam did, but they did not did that, produce that song. We had these two gentlemen from London produce that song, and that became another uh, number one hit. Man. You know, we just we, uh, uh, These two gentlemen from London came to uh, Tom Silverman's office. Hey, I got the song for Porsche and D's. They had a lady singing it, a demo, and we heard it. And he says, just give them a week to listen to it if they like it. We did it. We, we, we listened to it. We liked it, recorded it, and next thing you know, it was a number one record. Oh, so wow. that, that was that. <laughs> and I tell you what, what's so amazing is when you get to the story behind the story, who knew? So we're saying this moment in music history. So you have this rich history. You've, you've made such an impact because subsequently now all of a sudden we think of like New Jack Swing and things along those lines. Now all of a sudden it's like, it's almost like Mikey and Life Serial. Like if they can do it now. <laughs> But but that just lets you know, like the 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 influence that you've had on artists that came not only immediately after you, but you think about even to this day how hip hop and R and B, in in a number of respects, go lock and you know walk hand in hand. And I want to get to Zayim on this. So Zayim, here you are, as you said before, 
you look back at the style, you know, of music that influenced you as well as contemporary pieces. And I'm going to ask you this question. So here we are right now. Where do you see Force MDs continuing to make an impact, continuing to share this story and continuing to contribute to the music landscape? Um, that's a good question. Uh, right now, we're still making music. We're still doing a lot of other, uh, we're creating a lot of other platforms that I believe is going to last long in the new things that's coming in the future. Um, and what I really truly feel deep inside, I feel like a foursome D's movie is going to set a whole new thing, you know? So I, I do see the group going more into directing and acting and uh, bringing out more artists to kind of uh, describe what was happening back then to show what was really going down. I think the foursome D's story in a film, that's going to be a new opening, just like how the Jacksons had a new movie or like the new edition show, but our story their story is so crazy. I just, I just know it's going to be a long lasting talk. So that's what I see in the future right now. Uh, movie films. Um, of course, like I said before, new platforms, you know, and uh, Khalil, Khalil with the, the big business brain, he, he got so much business stuff in his brain. I'm just like, <clears throat> I hope he don't, I don't, I hope he don't get me for, you left out my, you left this out. You left this. <laughs> 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 hey, I, I don't know if you know that Zaim is our nephew. I don't know if you know that. He's our nephew. Okay. And and now you know it. As soon as you said that, it's like having an old school moment, sliding the family stone. It's a family affair. <laughs> like, yeah. really, and, speak, and speaking of family affair, August 27th, I think, is is a landmark date. And it's just really something big for the Force MD family and just for you know, Staten Island and things along those lines. So who'd like to take the lead in walking through Saturday, August 27th? There's something real big, groundbreaking, and it's leaving another footprint in regards to what you've done previously, what you're doing now, and what's coming on the horizon. Yeah, well, let me, let me, let me jump in the pool on this right here. Uh, August 27 to us is so important because of all the people that we lost. You know, it's not that many groups that can say they lost like five plus people. You know what I mean? Plug it's a lot of people that lost, and there's a lot of families that don't want their loved ones' contribution and memories to be lost in the given shuffle. So securing a street naming. It's mostly like securing a legacy, you know what I mean? And not only just securing a legacy, but also create inspiration from people around the world. And especially when we came and we was raised up that, you know, people could aspire to do the things that they want to do that they dream about. But the main thing is we want the world to know that it was uh, guys from Staten Island that came together that, you know, created uh, a genre you helped create and pioneer genre of hip hop and R and B that created timeless music, and we want the world to know these guys were from Staten Island, family, close friends, mostly family, and like I said, I'm on vacation. Y'all hear the noise? Don't worry about that. You know what I mean? Uh, and the thing is, we're gonna be celebrating. We got the councilman coming, the mayor may come. We got the senate coming. We got great people coming to help us celebrate this, you know, phenomenal, you know, celebration. And like I said, to us, like I said, this has been a journey. We lost a lot of people. And like my nephew said earlier, you know, securing the street naming, the sign, is just one Mississippi. Two Mississippi is the documentary that we got coming out, as well as the mini series that's being worked on right now. These are other things that we want to bring to the table because the reality that stories People like when you're a little kid, when you're a little baby, you read stories because these stories help you visualize and help you grow and see yourself in the world. And, you know, you're stuck to these stories. And like I said, these stories that we want to tell, we want to be a part of inspiring these kids and inspiring our kids and the world to, you know, what it is to follow your dreams, your passion and what 
took place during those times and just filling in blanks that other people never knew about. Just creating, making the story of our history as well as everybody's history just a little more vivid by our contribution to it. You follow me? Yeah, definitely. And what I'm gathering is it is when I when I think of the term leaving a footprint, it's leaving a footprint, like you said, through the lens of historical contributions. It's acknowledgement for people who are with us spiritually. It's also planting that seed mm -hmm. there. And it's also, mm -hmm. like you said, of motivation, encouragement, inspiration, that there are good things that can come from Staten Island. I remember what you guys said from the beginning is that Staten Island, in, in a lot of respects, is the forgotten borough. Yes. And, and, mm -hmm. and this is something to make sure people don't forget about the yeah. good the creative people, the not only, like I said, previous, present, but there's some great things right there in Staten Island. So if you could, for August 27th, for the street renaming, um, we have the date. Can you give us the time, the location, and what you hope people will get the day of but what you hope to leave with people in the days beyond. Yeah. Well, let me just see. You can add on what you want to add on. So the, the date is August 27th, and it's at 2 p.m. The location is Staten Island. The section of Staten Island is in is called Manus Harbor. That's the section that we most most of us grew up in. And uh, it's on the corner of Grandview and Bray Brant. It's pretty much where we lived at on the corner of um, Grandview and Bray Brant, uh, where they're gonna do the co-naming at, street co-naming at. And uh, what we hoping is that, you know, everybody that comes, they be inspired by it. A good thing about it, that day is the community day, which we call Harbor Day, which like, you know, every, every like, you know, a lot of communities, different cities, boroughs, each of the, whatever the projects, they have their own day, but that day is, it's called Harbor Day. So it, it falls on a great day where everybody's coming out regardless anyway. You know, there's going to be basketball games, going to be this, a lot of different events going on. We're going to be barbecuing. We're going to be doing the Elvis. Don't want to be, we're going to be doing it all. You know what I mean? We're just going to have a good time. You know what I mean? You know? So we're just hoping everybody come out and enjoy themselves and, 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 and take, so take a little inspiration with them when they leave. I don't know, Steve, you want to add on to that? Yes, I'd like to add on to uh, And plus it'll be... Uh, <clears throat> for the younger generation to know what uh, we contribute to Staten Island. Because a lot of younger generation just know of the Wu-Tang Clan, not, not knowing that we were first that put Staten Island on the map before Wu-Tang. And, you know, Wu-Tang mentions that a lot. Like, you know, the younger generation just don't know. But this would be, this would make them curious. Like, boy, some these, they must have did something in Staten Island. It'll make them Google us and look us up and, and, and see what we contribute before Wu-Tang years before them they, they're gonna see like wow I, I didn't know these guys did this you know i heard that song but i didn't know these guys from staten island like you, you'll be surprised when people hear uh tend to love but don't know the force and these sing it they, they say who say y'all sing that i get that all the time together but you know it's just to give them more knowledge of the, their uh borough of staten island who came first and who did it and uh you know wu-tang got a, a street called uh wu-tang just to got in staten island you know, we, we are proud of them they like they're real, real, real good friends, and and they're very proud oh, wow. of what we got out. We're just happy that oh, we got out. As long as we got ours too, it, it feels better. Like we got ours too because we felt like wow, they got this for us. But it's okay. But we all family, and we all happy for each other on that. And it'll definitely be knowledgeable for the younger generation. And plus, we're gonna give a concert out there to really just put just put the cherry on the top. We're gonna give a concert out there in the park. So it's gonna be very exciting that day. And uh. It's just yeah. going to be happy to see a lot of our family coming from everywhere, down south, everywhere, just to come, because this is such a big day to everybody. I'm I want to add on real quick. Yeah, sure. I want to add on. Uh, that day, I just, I just, I want to make sure that these guys get their flowers. And because we're in an era now where people say, you know, we got to give the OGs their flowers, you know, while they're still here. And with this, with this signing, not only is it going to, you know, put the stamp on it, it's, it's, I feel like it's going to not only give them their flowers, but for all the Force and D supporters that's been riding with the group for years from through the tragedies, through the successful yes. moments. 
I want them to feel like they got their flowers as well from riding with them. You know, they, mm -hmm. these people have been riding with the force for so long right. and they've it's been showing one. up. So for all the people that's out there that's going to come and show up, we want to give you your flowers for riding with the force for all of the things we've been through. And um, and this is going to be a big day. And we, we want everybody to be a part of it and, and enjoy it just like it's theirs. And like we said, we just right. want to salute. We just want to salute and give the rest in pieces to the members we lost. We lost my brother, our brother TC, our uncle Jesse D, uh, Mercury Charles Nelson, and Trisco J Pearson. Of course, in these, and yes, Lord K One, Lord K One, and Doctor Rock. Of course, in these, we was rappers, but it's all the same family. You know? mm -hmm. And I tell you what, you you captured so much by like like I said before capturing the history acknowledging people who are here with us in spirit making sure to draw connections across generations you know for staten island like this is it's a big moment but there's so many other big moments and big things that can come from it and definitely have to commend all of you for like i said what you have done what you are doing and what you've yet to do to continue to be a presence and motivate, encourage, inspire, influence, and still hearing your influence today. So before we get ready to kind of put all this together and before we make sure that people have the info, how to stay in contact, things along those lines, I'd like to ask all of you this question. All of you have a great wealth of experience, knowledge, wisdom, insight. And it's hard to say, leave one nugget, but if there's one seed that you'd like to plant as our way to kind of close this out, I'm going to go ahead and start with Zayim, then go to Stevie D and then close out with Khalil. So Zayim, if there's one seed that you'd like to plant for people who are going to watch this, read this, be out on August 27th, what's one seed you'd like to plant or something that you feel like people can take with them and build and grow in whatever way, shape, or form? One word, love. I want people to, I want to plant a love seed because love defeats everything. And that's really all we need, honestly, for healing, for solving all problems, love and respect. That's the P, that's the seed I want to plant because that right there will last forever. Okay. okay. Uh, EVD. Okay. Uh, just, uh, just do, you know, I, I feel that the, the, the street sign is definitely part of our just do, you know, it's, it's, uh, we've been told for years, y'all do not get your just do. Y'all are underrated. All of this. I just hope it all change. I hope just this makes people just listen to more than just tender love and lovers house. Just dig into our songs and listen to all the beautiful songs we made. They'll be surprised how many beautiful songs we made. Like they're gonna say, "Wow, I didn't know they made this. I didn't know they did this." We made a lot of beautiful songs. Just uh, start researching more about us and, and learn more about us, and you will be really surprised uh, what we really can give and what we can do, and that we you know no uh, no ego. We 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 a talented we a talented family and we we brought a lot to the music table. We just want people to just to research it and look more and find out what we really did and what we what is it's a reason why uh, we get the street sign because we because people know the people that do know. I want everyone to know. So that's why we're gonna do anything we can to let everybody know what we are in this music business. Okay, Khalil. Uh, if you aspire to be anything in life, in any field, you know, in anything, you don't want to be someone that's waiting for stuff to happen. You got to make it happen. Like the street name, we made it happen. We didn't wait for nobody to happen. Nobody didn't give this to us. We made it happen. Calls was made, put people out there. It, it happened. We made it happen. Everything we do, we Petition. make it happen. Yeah. You got to make it happen. And my thing is to say, we're continuing the legacy, but I want to leave with people Win is never quit, and quit quit is never win. So just don't give up. You know what I mean? I tell you what, gentlemen, today has been 
part trip down memory lane, part looking forward to the immediate future, but very encouraged, inspired for what lies ahead, not only with your additional projects in film, documentaries, I understand book, things along those lines, but just, again, plant seeds for that next generation of creatives, whether it's music, whether it's business, whether it's public service. And as a reminder, people might have called Staten Island the Forgotten Borough, but I think it'll definitely be on people's radar and be more at the forefront with the rest of the boroughs and the whole tri-state up top. Mm -hmm. So as we get ready to conclude, gentlemen, please let us know the best ways to stay connected, website, social media, things along those lines. But uh, at Force MDs on Facebook, uh, Twitter, I mean, Instagram at official Force MDs, LinkedIn at Force MDs, Twitter at Force MDs, and the website is theforcemds.com. Theforcemds.com. That's how you can keep connected with us. And shout out to our girl Ty. We see you making moves, man. You mean? <laughs> so, uh, Zayim, Zayim, you want to tell them how you get? Oh, yeah. So, so um, mine's also official Zayim, Z I E M E. You can check out the Butter Smooth Project, classic RB uh, project I did with Ice T, and the dedication to my uncles as well. So, you can check that out. Butter Smooth, Zayim, official Zayim. That's the website and Instagram. Yeah. And I, mine is for some D's, and, you know, and Stevie <laughs> D, you know, Stevie D, FMDS. We all um, on the same page. Yeah, yeah, we all on the same page. So, you know. I tell you what, gentlemen, I, I sincerely appreciate you taking and making time to share your story. Your story is ongoing. It doesn't stop with the 27th. As I like to say, as much of you, as you all have done, there's still a little bit more for y'all to do. And um, I know just from the the energy from today, y'all gonna get it done. That's 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 obvious. And as a reminder, to make sure to catch this, it'll be available on our website, acenortonccs.com. Click on the menu for articles and coverage. It'll be the very top one that you see. Make sure to add Creative Community Solutions LLC on Facebook and YouTube, and of course, Ace Norton CCS on Twitter and Instagram. So we want to thank our guests tonight, the, the Force MDs, for, for, like I said, the great work that they have done, the great work that they are doing, and the great work that they've yet to do. Hopefully you've been motivated, encouraged, inspired. Make sure to show up and show out, not just that now in the other boroughs, you know, yeah. Jersey, mm -hmm. York, Irvington. Y'all can make the trip across the river. I'm just saying, make the trip across mm -hmm. the river. Do it. Right. Um, and gentlemen, until next time, all of you take extremely good care and look forward to seeing you real soon. Hey, Peace, thank you, brother. brother. Thank you, good brother. All right. Make plans to be in Staten Island on Saturday, August 27th, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the street naming ceremony in honor of the Force MDs. Check out the information on the flyer provided and make plans to be there Saturday, August 27th.